all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. And there is the 23-year-old Dennis Duglin, a record of 13 and one with eight knockouts. He now lives in Marlboro, New Jersey, 5'9", 154 and a half, 23 years old. You see his mom, Sophia, behind him. When he was a young boy, his mother took him to the gym. She never stopped going with him. She trains him. Here's how Dennis sees it. There is Sophia. She actually had a few amateur bouts herself a few years back. And they are opposite the unbeaten 11-0 with nine knockouts, Steven Martinez. He has the height advantage. He's 6-1. Remember, Douglas is 5'9", 21 years old. He's from the Bronx. He was a Golden Gloves champ at 152 pounds nationally in 08, three times a New York Golden Gloves champ. Stop, I want you to stop punching. I'll tell you a break, all right? Dylan, both your trunks are low. People blows above this belt line, all right? Questions? Questions? Good luck, guys. Frank Santori is the referee. They're scheduled for eight. Time to see how the fighters will keep their edge. Brought to you by Just For Men Mustache and Beard. Well, let's start with the undefeated hard puncher Martinez. In the fight, your opponent, Douglas, when he lost his first and only fight, he was hurt with a right hand. They usually do work against southpaws. Try it again. And for Douglas, or you're faster. Use that speed to get in and then get out. Mama's boy written across the back of the trunks of Dennis Douglas. The southpaw comes out, shows that right jab right away. As you see Martinez trying to jab to the body. Well, as I mentioned, Douglas only lost by knockout. And he was knocked out in that fight by a 14, 17, and one fighter for what it's worth. We asked him about that yesterday. He said, listen, I was not prepared. I absolutely looked at my opponent's record. I didn't think much of him. It was a rookie mistake. I took him lightly. I got caught with a shot I shouldn't have got caught by. Keep it off his belt line. Keep it off the belt line. Dennis himself scored an early knockdown in that fight that he was eventually defeated in. You know, I've heard you many times say with a guy like this, one of the worst things that can happen is that you score an early knockdown and you don't think much of your opponent. Yeah, then you start to think that it's just going to come easily. You assume things. And before the knockdown, you weren't assuming things. You were on top of yourself, ready to do all the little things. You forget the little things when you do the big thing and score a knockdown. I've had fighters in that position. I had a fight years ago, Kevin Moley, who fought the great former world champion Wilfred Benitez in Madison Square Garden. Moley goes and scores the first round knockout, or knockdown, I should say, and I told him, forget about it. Don't be looking for it the rest of the night. He said, what do you mean, don't look for it? I'm going to get it again. Moley looked for it the rest of the night. Guess what? He didn't find it. He lost the decision. Off balance that time, throwing that left hand was the southpaw, Douglas on the inside that time as they both were able to land left hands. Both these fighters good amateurs, as you said. Douglas, 103 bouts, two-time national amateur champion. Martinez, three-time New York Golden Glove champion, also a former national amateur champion. There was a left hand that scored for Douglas as he gets Martinez into the corner, and then Martinez is able to spin out of it. Final minute of round number one between these two New York-based Young prospects. Yeah, Brooklyn versus the Bronx, like the old days. You know, it's for bragging rights in New York. The old days, you always had different boroughs matching up with each other. He slipped there as he backed up and they caught. In the old days, you even had competing neighborhoods. He was better, Bronx or Brooklyn. Dodgers and Yankees. Don't grab him. Go. Some of the classic battles at St. Nick's and MSG through the years. And the neighborhood boxing battles on your Friday nights. Coming to the end of round number one, the season debut of Friday Night Fights. Glad you're with us from Key West, Florida. Stay with us. More to come between Douglas and Martinez. Action from the first round. Big punches. For Martinez, but a little shorter, faster punches 
from Fox. Douglas. They got there a little better. Friday night fights from Key West, round number two. Dennis Douglas, 13 and one, in the red with the gold trim. Stephen Martinez, 11 and 0, with nine knockouts. Two guys who know each other from the amateur ranks, fighting in tournaments both locally in New York and the New York Golden Gloves and some of the national tournaments. CompuBox numbers from round number one as we take a look. A 19 to 15 connect advantage for Dennis Douglas. Well, you see the attitudes, the approaches of two fighters as we talked about on keep your edge before the fight started. Douglas wants to be the faster guy. He just now switching around a little bit. He wants to be the faster guy. He wants to use those legs with the hands, not stay in one spot too long. And you can see Martinez, just like his record would suggest, 11 and 0, nine knockouts, wants to be the stronger guy. He's using that jab, not to snap back the head of Douglas, but to measure, to set up the power punches. That's what he's looking for. Comes to the inside now, fires off that straight right hand, turned his back for a moment. And then Frank Santori separates them. There's a sharp left hand from Douglas that was a glancing blow. Douglas has to fight almost a perfect fight because Martinez has the power. Martinez can erase a lot of mistakes, bang, with one shot. Douglas can't afford to make too many mistakes. And his key, it's not just offense, it's defense. He's got to get off, as I said, don't stay there, don't lay around too long. Don't get greedy, and don't get total right hands, which is what Southpaws get caught with. Lead right hand by Steven Martinez that time. Yeah, you know, I have a funny feeling this is gonna be the kind of fight where Douglas gonna be doing okay with his hand speed, his physical skills, that, you know, his style, moving a little bit, trying to keep the stronger Martinez off balance. He's gonna be doing okay until, until the moment he gets caught, and then lights out. Nine knockouts in his 11-0 record for Steven Martinez in the white trunks. Having a good second round here. Coming up on the final half minute of round number two. Opened up that time. And again, you could see the attitude. See the approach, but you see the attitude of both fighters. You know, Douglas knows that he's not the stronger guy. He's got to give a little bit of ground, as he's doing right there. Got to navigate a little bit. Be smart. Martinez, you can see, he wants to lay in there. He wants to make sure he lands a big power shot. What he has to be careful is that he doesn't get carried away with those big shots and leave himself open to that, to short counters. He just fell in moments ago, but didn't pay much of a price. End of two. Watch here as Martinez gets out of position. He gets turned a little bit. Nice little move there by Douglas, but he's a gentleman. He doesn't punch behind the head. He doesn't want to be fined. But then he goes straight back in the right hand. The southpaw killer by Martinez. It landed, affected him a little bit, but it was a wide shot. If that shot is straightened out by Martinez, maybe he gets his 10th knockout. Round three scheduled for eight. Martinez said he had the hardest training camp he's ever had in terms of running and conditioning and the most sparring that he's ever worked. His first eight rounder, 11-0. Nine knockout, 21-year-old prospect, 6-1 versus 5-9 in this matchup. We have something very unusual, of course, you touched on it earlier. Douglas, as his trainer, corner person, chief second, this is his mom. Sophia, his yeah. mother Sophia trains him. She got him started in the sport. Can, she had some amateur fights. Does a good job, but it can be very difficult having a mother in the corner. If you're losing a fight, or things are starting to get a little hairy, and that happens in this business. What happens if your mother starts acting like a mother? Well, we've even seen that with some fathers training their sons. It's a little different with a mother. Right, exactly. It has, has to be much different. You know, we asked him about it. You heard what he said earlier. He said, you know, I think the difference is, is that a lot of dads who have their children in this game and possibly train or manage them. They're living vicariously through their sons. He says, not the case with my mom. She's in with me. Yeah, that might be true, but a lot of dads won't start crying in the corner if their son starts getting a bloody nose or starts getting shaken a little bit or starts visiting the canvas a little bit or if the lights start going off and then start coming back on. I'm glad they came back on. 
Well, felt like we were going to have Monday Night Football in San Francisco for a moment, but it was only a moment. Outside venue here. We're right near the water in Key West. We've been here when it's been very windy. Not the case tonight. Very calm, placid evening. Mild temperatures. Beautiful night for outdoor boxing. Of course, a big heavyweight title fight in college football is coming up Monday. Coverage will begin at 8 o'clock Eastern for the All-State BCS National Championship. Number one, LSU. Number two, Alabama. Sure, before the night's over, we will get a prediction from Teddy on that game. Juan Martinez, I know the only thing keeping Dogman in his fight is his defense, and a big part of his defense is his legs, his wheels. I'm going to the body of Juan Martinez. I'm in the corner, Martinez. I think that's what I'd say. Go to the body, take those wheels away a little bit. Martinez has the power, but they're big shots. They're not short shots. You can see them coming a little bit. And you can punch inside them. That's what Douglin has to do. Punch inside them and get the heck out. End of three. <laughs> You're going to see the pairs of hands. They help Douglin right there. Quick left hand over the slow hand of Martinez. Speed of Douglin, not the power of Martinez. Right now, the speed of Douglin shown itself a little bit. Round four scheduled for eight between these two prospects. Martinez in the white trunks, the taller of the two. He's the one that's unbeaten, 11-0 with nine knockouts. Let's look at the numbers compiled by CompuBox. The punches through three rounds, and Martinez with 10 more connects than Douglin. Comes forward with that straight left hand, does the shorter southpaw. Yeah, that's not something that I'm sure you want to hear in the corner. Comes forward, does the southpaw. Because doesn't have the power of Martinez. He comes forward, he stays in front of Martinez. He's giving Martinez a chance to do what he's looking to do. Land the big shot. I think Douglas better off if he's, as we said earlier, getting off, using those legs a little bit, not staying in front. Get a peek at your scorecard, Teddy. Two rounds to one for Martinez. Taking the second and third. See him tying up that right hand as Douglin tried to work with the left that time. You know, you see the perfect record of Martinez, but nobody's perfect. 11 and 0, 9 knockouts, but you see some of his flaws in the ring. Punch a little too wide, sometimes a little one-dimensional. Always coming in that front door, and a lot of times the same way, and going straight back. Got the warning from referee Frank Santori about pushing down when the shorter Douglas comes on the inside and lowers his head. See, if I'm Martinez, what did I just say? Always coming in the front door the same way. What do I mean by that? You know, you're predictable. Every once in a while, faint a little bit. You know, get a guy to throw his punches, then come in the front door. This way you don't walk in where the guy's ready to nail you, ready to time you. Going to get a break. Going to get a break here as they wash the mouthpiece in the corner of Steven Martinez. Under a minute to go here in this fourth round. Martinez, not perfect in the ring, but close to perfect with the people taking care of him. Good management. Got Pat Lynch, real good man. He was the manager of the late Arturo Gatti, took care of him, got him to world titles. And Brandon Jacobs, my man, New York Giants running back, good man, loves boxing. He's playing this weekend. Also manages Kendall Holt. He manages Kendall Holt, the former world champion. Him and Pat, a good team behind Martinez. Of course, Pat Lynch, a lot of success with the late Arturo Gatti. Brandon Jacobs has a busy weekend as he's surely watching his charge, Stephen Martinez, here tonight before he will be getting to uh, NFL playoff action. And to four as Dennis Douglin returns to his corner where he's trained by his mother, Safaya. Let's go. We got to follow up after the last. 
So that was Safaya, the mother of Dennis Duglin, who proudly displays the mama's boy on the back of his trunks. His mother's been training him since she got him started in boxing as a young man. Teddy, I don't know what plan A was, but apparently that didn't work because she said plan B a few times to him. Yeah, maybe plan A was to push him back a little bit, discourage him a little bit. Now I think plan B, and maybe that should have been plan A, and it's working pretty well. Be the faster guy, keep your punches concise, short, and don't stand in front. So round number five, scheduled for eight. Martinez, the taller fighter in the white trunks with the blue trim, 11-0. These two were in tournaments together. Didn't fight against each other as amateurs. Douglas was a couple years older, a little bit higher weight, but they know each other well. Martinez was born in Puerto Rico, but was raised in the Bronx. Douglas raised in Brooklyn and then moved out to Jersey. You know, Douglas took this fight on a little bit of late notice. Martinez had more time to get ready, and usually that means Martinez would have had an advantage, but I wonder, because if Douglas took the fight on short notice, that means Martinez had short notice to get ready for a Southpaw. I wonder how much Southpaw sparring he had in the gym because right now he's not looking real comfortable at all times. Stop, stop, break. There you go. Halfway through the fifth round, let's look at where Teddy's scorecard stands. 38-38, last round went to Douglas. There's an uppercut on the inside from Dennis. You know, the only loss that we said by Douglas was a knockout loss, but maybe one of the things helping him Open his chin a little bit so far tonight is, of course, using his legs and not exposing his chin. But maybe another thing is that Douglas, the bigger guy, the smaller guy, Martinez, grew the middleweight his entire career. While Douglas started as a middleweight his first seven fights, then he dropped down to junior middle. Maybe that extra natural size of Douglas helping him be durable when he has to be durable. Douglas won the National Golden Gloves back in 2008 at 165 pounds. So this way I go to the body of Martinez. I know I said it earlier, but bang that body. You're the power puncher. You got a guy who's moving on you. Take that movement away a little bit. Take some air out of those tires. So he's going to the head. I think he's starting to weigh him down a little bit. This helps. This is really an opportune time and an inopportune time for a stoppage for Martinez. I think Douglas needed a little pit stop there. Looked to me like he was starting to wear down a little bit. 27 seconds left for Martinez to continue doing what he was doing. Backs him up against the ropes, but then Douglas fights his way out with yeah, that Joe, left see hand. one of the problems there. It's wide shots by Martinez, shorter shots by Douglas. Here's exhibit A of why I want him to go to the body if I was in the corner of Martinez. Look at that body, wide open. And he falls in, Martinez. Does not take advantage of that exposed rib cage on the right side of Douglas. Glad you're back with us here. Round number six, scheduled for eight. Steven Martinez in the white trunks is undefeated, trying to stay perfect early in his career, facing a fellow New York-based Young fighter and Dennis Douglin. Martinez is 21 years old, Douglin 23, and he did indeed get an earful from his corner trainer, Marco Suarez, telling him he wanted to see him go to the body with the jab and then come up top with the right hand. Well, good corner, Martinez corner. Suarez also a very experienced guy in that corner. The cut man, Nelson Crab, has been in boxing for about 40 years. Former amateur fighter, used to run the amateur programs, a lot of them in the Apollo Boxing Club in the Bronx. Matter of fact, 30 years ago, I used to take my amateurs from Catskill to get experience, and one of them was a guy named Mike Tyson. Well, let me ask you about the New York amateur scene nowadays, Teddy, because obviously it's been a hotbed for so many emerging pros for the past century, but things have changed recently, specifically how Steven Martinez came up. He came up in the Webster... PLL, PAL, the Police Athletic League in the Bronx. That was shut down. Yeah, after 85 years of the PAL saving kids, getting them off the street, having the boxing gyms, 
they got a new athletic director. They decided to stop the program, shut the gyms down, and that gym got shut down. Pat Ruzel, who was running all the gyms, did a great job, does a great job. Stephen Martinez was in that Webster PAL. Oh, Pat Ruzel came to me and asked me well, if the Dr. Atlas Foundation would reopen the gym, and we reopened the gyms in Staten Island and Brooklyn, and now they're the Dr. Atlas pops and kids gym. That's wonderful work by your foundation. I mean, look at a guy like Steven Martinez, gave him a chance, gave him an opportunity, and now he's a professional athlete. Well, it's good people that allow us to run those programs, that give us the resources to do that, and I never forget that. I'm thankful to all those people that care about such things, and right now, again, Martinez needs to care about going to the body a little bit more. Step back, step back, guys. Short left hand that time by Douglin as Martinez came forward. Now working that jab again. You know, There's I've been a lead talk left. talking about the corner of Martinez. Just give a little credit to the corner of Douglin. Safia, the mom has done a good job with everybody else in that corner. And I said early on, I have a funny feeling Douglin's going to be doing real well with his quicker hands, his quicker feet until the moment comes. And then all of a sudden, maybe lights out. Well, not so far, they're making me a liar right now. Tries to dig to the body, opened up that time. Comes back with a left hand. We got a close fight between these young prospects. Martinez trying to stay unbeaten. One of the most unique settings you'll ever see in boxing. We come here year after year, as you see a couple fans uh, tucked behind a bush here in Mallory Square in Key West, Florida, the southernmost point on a beautiful, mild night. Friday night fights in Mallory Square, packed house outside. Beautiful setting as we are now in round number seven, scheduled for eight. Dennis Douglin, 13 and one, taking on Steven Martinez, the unbeaten 21-year-old from the Bronx. Right hand from Martinez, tries to come in, but Douglin got underneath that one. Well, like Captain Kirk would say in Star Trek, a great show. You used to watch that show? I'm not a fan, really. Oh. I just uh, went yeah, to the movies. A little, with it. little early for you. Because yeah, it was, it was still on when I was yeah. a kid, but not, eh, it didn't do anything for Well, me. he used to say, going to uncharted territories. Both these fighters going to uncharted territories right now. First time in their life, first time in their career, they've been past the sixth round. I don't really uh, see you as a Trekkie back in the day, Teddy. I, I, I like see. Spock. You know, I tried yeah. that maneuver a couple of times. <laughs> I got to admit. <laughs> All the fight for Martinez have been in New York or New Jersey. First time that he's had to travel to try to get a win. We're seeing right now how well he travels. Douglas, meanwhile, fought in New York and New Jersey in his career. Plenty, but also fought in South Carolina and Texas and Maryland and Pennsylvania. Now both men on the inside. There was an uppercut in the left hand by Douglin there as he escaped from the corner. And he did escape exactly by punching his way out. He punched a little bit, and then he turned a little bit. Teddy scorecard. See Martinez. 58-56. And again, you see the attitude, you see the style of Martinez. He wants to walk down Douglin, but he pushes that jab. Usually as a range finder, and every once in a while, something quick can go over because he's Stop pushing breaking. the jab. Here's the pushing of the jab. When you're pushing that jab, gives the quicker guy a chance to get off some fast punches. And it also kind of warns him of something. You're pushing the jab at somebody, you're telling him, I'm looking to measure you. Something big's coming right after. So it gives the guy that you're looking to measure a chance. In this case, Douglas, a chance to not stay around for you to deliver the big shot. And again, the body, the body, the body is where I think Martinez should be concentrating. Picking up the pace here on the clap to end round number seven. And as will be the case all year long, we will stay before the final round to listen in to the corners. Back and forth all night long a little bit. I think 
Martinez is doing a little bit more of the fourth. And therefore, I have my head in the fight, but what I think doesn't matter is what the judges think. Eighth and final round. Martinez trying to stay unbeaten. 11-0 as it stands right now. Douglin got an earful from his mom, Safaya. A lot of that included, really? Really, dude? Not what we're used to hearing. And again, you see the chest thrown. Don't Martinez thrown him with down. the intention of delivering power. But they're wide. They're a little fat. And right there, you saw that short right hook from the southpaw Douglin. Again, it gets inside those wide shots every once in a while. Let's see where things stand on Teddy's scorecard. 68-65, Martinez sweeping the last three rounds, according to Teddy. We have Mike Pernick, a veteran Florida ref uh, judge with us. Billy Ray and Rocky Young as the three judges tonight. Stop that. Talk about the manager of Martinez, does a tremendous job, Pat Lynch, to throw out a little proper respect to Al Heyman, the manager for Douglin, does a real good job with his guys. Probably the most powerful manager in the sport over the last 10 years. Yeah, I don't know if that power's going to shift a little bit. He had some connections at HBO. Those connections aren't there anymore. They've been moved on. So we'll see whether or not he can still plug his guys into HBO, which is what he used to always do and has done in a pretty remarkable way for his charges. Remarkable success that also came with much criticism that only takes a simple press of a Google search to find. Yeah, it's been written about in places that I don't look on the internet. Douglin brings Martinez into the corner. I don't look on the internet because I don't know how to turn a computer on. It's okay. I don't You're know. texting, which is a, oh, that's a great leap up. of advancement. And I have a new fax stop, machine stop. for, right. for the new year. Move. They still have those? Oh, <laughs> they work well. <laughs> Just that you have to buy a lot of ink. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, I'm driving my life a lane. It's a waterfall of ink Crazy. there in Staten Island. Well, I need FX more ink. Right? I need more ink. <laughs> right now, I need more punches. They got this thing called email. Came around somewhere in the 90s. I heard about it. Heard about it. Right now, I don't know if Martinez has heard about short punches or body short punches, but maybe after this fight, he'll hear a little bit more about it from his trainer. Good effort by Douglin now to finish up strong here in this eighth round as they take it to the bell. Ladies and gentlemen from Mallory Square in the Conk Republic, Key West, Florida, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Bill Ray scores about 77-75 for Douglin. Judge Rocky Young scores about 77-75, Martinez. Judge Michael Pernick scores about 77-75. For the winner, by split decision, Dennis, the mama's boy, Douglas. And mama's happy. I hope she doesn't twist an ankle with those high heels on, but I give her credit. Mama, you did a good job, and I was wrong. It was not lights out for your son. It was lights on, and forward you go. Safaya has trained him to victory over the undefeated Steven Martinez. For Martinez, first loss is marked now 11-1, a split decision. It was 77-75 all the way around with Rocky Young seeing it for Martinez. Billy Ray and Mike Pernick going for Dennis Douglin.